This is breaking news. All day we've been following the breaking news about the subway shooting this morning in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Let's go to a live press conference. Right for the the incredible talent of the doctors here who were able to restore life to his thumb and uh, after surgery he should be able to be discharged tomorrow because of a long recovery. His mother does not speak English. She is Chinese. She is there alone, and it was so sad to hear her to a translator talk about her anxiety. All she has is her son and just the two of them, and she does not know what she's going to do when she leaves. So I had a long, long hug with her and let her know that we send the love of all New Yorkers. Uh, she just lost her job as a home health care aide. If anyone wants a very warm, caring person to be a home health care aide, I'm going to give her a great recommendation. So let's make sure she has one less thing to worry about, a wonderful person. So I just want to come out here and show support again, thanking the MTA workers who, with their quick action, averted even more tragedy this morning. All the fellow riders this morning who stepped up to help people when they are down and injured is just another testament of how incredible New Yorkers are, as well as the law enforcement, health care teams, and everyone who comes together so powerfully in a time of crisis. And we have to ensure that this specter of gun violence in our streets and in our subways ends once and for all. I'm committed to working with the mayor to deploy the resources. And we have our MTA police very vigilant working on the grounds as well. So we're there to assist, we're there to help, as well as continue working with our federal partners on leads. We did establish a gun interdiction task force, a nine state group of individuals who come together regularly. And we believe that if this person has left the state, we'll be able to use the resources of our connections and relationships that we have with nine neighboring states to help bring this person to justice. So we hope this is resolved soon. New Yorkers just want to get on with life. I took the subway over here uh, earlier this evening with Jano to let New Yorkers know uh, we appreciate their resiliency, how tough they are, that they still keep coming on this subway. And uh, I was really grateful to see that uh, New Yorkers cannot be kept down. It was testament to that today we saw on our subway ride. So uh, with any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Also, anything on the MTA, Jano and Catherine Garcia has any questions to answer, any questions to answer on state operations. Governor, would you call Certainly, people do feel terrorized by this action, uh, but the uh, terrorism has a legal term, and we have to make sure that the description of the intent behind it, they'll be finding evidence. They'll be looking at the person's laptop. They'll be looking at social media. They'll be able to identify the motive and the intentionality behind it, and therefore, that'll determine whether it fits the legal description of terrorist activity. But in my heart, this is a terrorizing action to put fear in the hearts of New Yorkers but they don't know who they're messing with. They do not know that we will not bow down to an individual with a depraved heart who tries to st strike terror in our hearts. It wasn't successful. New Yorkers are back at it. They're back on the subways. They're back in our restaurants. They're back being normal once again. Governor, can you tell us how many victims there are? The discrepancy about how many victims there are. There were 16 at the scene when we last saw you. Now we're here at 29. How many victims are there? And I heard you say some ages. What was the age range? Who was the youngest victim? Who was the oldest? The youngest one here was 12 years old. I can confirm that. I don't know that children, I believe all the children, the young people came here. Uh, this is the only uh, pediatric trauma center in the borough, so I believe they all arrived here. Uh, they had five, four children and one adult. They count the 18 year old as the adult. So there were five patients that were brought here today. I don't know more on the conditions. I do know some of the numbers increased. It was not shooting victims. It was more likely police officers who had succumbed to the, the overcoming with smoke. And that seems to be more smoke related injuries. I spoke to some of the doctors here today about what's involved in that. It's a lot of it's monitoring the blood levels, making sure no toxins got in the blood is the concern. But uh, those are not gunshot wounds. Yes, yes, they were. But the number that there's only two in the hospital right now. The earlier ones were discharged with smoke inhalation. So the younger ones are fine. The one the families I spoke to are the 16 year old and the 18 year old. But yes, they're all on their way to school today. We got a lot of high fives and good job, Governor, which I appreciated. And uh, just you can see it in their eyes. They will not bow down. They are tough. They've been through so much before, but uh, I will let Jano speak to uh, his ridership. He knows them better than anyone. Uh, but I just thought it showed what New Yorkers are made out of, and we want them to continue coming back. The last time there was a mass 
uh, shooting on our subway system, I believe it was 1984. So I don't want to act as if and, and treat this as a normal experience on our subway. This is a rarity, but one instance like this is one too many. Jano Day, how about the video? How about the no, I, I think the governor has handled it exactly right on. The vibe from New Yorkers is, you know, we're not backing down. We're going about our lives. You know, New Yorkers have just been through COVID. They've overcome Superstorm Sandy. They've been through the financial crisis, 9-11. They are incredibly strong. But they're also mindful of the need to, for all of us to team up and increase subway safety. Governor, Mayor Adams made a commitment to subway safety before this event. We've heard from all the levels of government that commitment is redoubled today. And we've seen it even before this event. More cops on the platform, more cops on trains. Mayor Adams has said he's going to go even further today. I think that's going to make a difference. It's already started today. How about the video cameras not working in the subway station where the incident happened? I mean, well, we have, we have 10,000 cameras, almost 10,000 cameras in the system, up from 3,000 only a few years ago. We spent hundreds of millions of dollars. We have 600 cameras just on the section of the M line, the N line in Brooklyn. Premature to say which cameras were exactly right and got and produced the best evidence, but the whole system is really, the, of cameras is really working. It's producing a lot of arrests. When we bad guys do stuff, we always seem to get a picture. The cops today were looking at cameras up and down the system because they wanted to see where, uh, where this uh, criminal had entered the system as well as where he may have left. I think it's a big help over the long run. Anyone else? Anyone else? Right. Right. What's about, what's about now, the, now the Pardon me? Now the Yes, there will be more police on the streets for sure. It's something we take very seriously as we head into the holiday season, Passover, Easter to follow. So there will be more police to protect people, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Just one more thing. So let me clarify. you got two people still here yes. at this hospital. Yes. Just, this, just the children came here. Right, so, uh, so two people from the yes, yes, two of two. Are you going to Langone? Is, are you going to we're, we may be making the rounds. We, we have, uh, we're trying to get updates uh, as the situation unfolds, and so we'll try to visit more patients and their families. And really, all I wanted to do is extend the love of 20 million New Yorkers to all of them and give them a really a, a, a virtual as well as a personal embrace. It was very important to me just to see the moms at their time of great stress. There's nothing more frightening for a mom or a dad than to see your child injured. Um, I've had children injured before, and it's uh, it just hits you right here. So I just wanted to give a little comfort to a mom in need tonight. Thank you. Is there a doctor that can talk to us? Do hospitals have any patients like these other hospitals? How many patients are hospitalized? Do you have any information on that? Yeah, we know that we have a little bit, but it's many people are uh, many of the patients are being released now uh, as we speak. So there are ones at Longo and there are ones at Methodist for the other two hospitals. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Appreciate it.